Um, hi, and welcome to the new um, Let's Go Storm podcast. Um, we're here to talk about all things uh, Hemel Storm, basically. Um, just to give you a bit of a brief synopsis about us and where we're at and what we're, sort of direction we're going in. Um, I started out, um, I used to play basketball, a second just gone fairly sort of tall. Um, and I used to watch Hemel Rules play live in the 80s and 90s, a fair bit. And the atmosphere was just phenomenal. The, the town just came alive whenever there was a game on a Saturday night. Um, also, remember when they were the Overteen Royals, they used to fire Overteen chocolate bars into the crowd, Overteen T-shirts, etc. And it just, every Saturday night, you'd look forward to it as a kid, just going down there. And then when they moved out of the area, um, I think they went to Watford, then they went out to Milton Keynes, became Milton Keynes Lions. And they eventually moved to... And the Copper Box and are now London Lions playing the BBL. And I sort of lost touch when they moved out of the area. Um, and it was just by chance, really, that um, I watched The Last Dance in lockdown about March 2020, just a few days after it came out. Sitting there with my wife, looking through Netflix of things um, to watch. And she said, how about this? I've heard this is pretty good. So I sat down and it just drew me back into basketball. Just absolutely captivated me. Found it mesmerising because I grew up in the Jordan era. You know, it was a massive hero. I wasn't a Bulls fan. I was just a fan of him. Um, I had the Jordans when I was a kid. I had all the T-shirts, etc. Um, and it, yeah, and then I just I stumbled upon the fact that Hemel and Storm were back in the area because I knew well there hadn't been a team in the area for a while, but I think they'd been back about 10, 11 years, something like that. Um, and then I went to a game with my daughter, and that was it. I was just com completely hooked. The atmosphere. I thought this is just phenomenal and the sort of value for money element as well. Because I'm used, I'd see season tickets at um, football and rugby clubs and they were extortionate compared to what Storm won. That, that's what I, that's what really um, drove it home, what brilliant value for money is. And knowing that my kids love it as well, my son comes along to games. It's just, it's just fantastic. It's such a community feel. And that's what I really love about Grand Storm. So, yeah, it's you guys. Yeah, so I'm Rob. Um, I've been going to Storm for about six years now. Um, like Fraz, was always into football and rugby previously, played basketball at school. Um, but it was only when the NBA moved from Sky to BT that my oldest daughter showed an interest in that. Um, so we went to watch Storm. Um, a few months later, my youngest daughter wanted to come along as well, and it's the only sport that they'll both sit and watch and happily. Uh, we've been season ticket holders for three or four years now. Um, and they still love it so much that um, for the forthcoming season, they are volunteering, selling the raffle tickets. So please buy raffle tickets when you go to the games. <laughs> Shame, shameless plug there, Rob. I think it was a fair plug. <laughs> fair enough. Yeah, and uh, I'm Rishi. Um, similar journey to, to the guys in some ways, you know, from playing basketball back in the day. Um, I actually came through to Hemel Storm from Russell Hoops. So my son joined the Russell Hoops um, weekly camp and was starting to play, um, got a bit of last dance. Uh, and that, we were kind of said, oh, maybe we should go and watch a game. I was a Scotty Griffin fan, by the way, 33. Um, but um, yeah, and just, uh, you know, when we got there, same similar story to yourself, Raz, I think the, the atmosphere and the, you know, uh, not really consciously doing it, but you know, jumping out of your seat, screaming your head off for like for the for during the game was just it just kind of took over. So, um, and then you know, getting the opportunity to go down to the uh, to the away games and the finals uh, really sealed it for me. So this year is my first year as a season ticket holder, um, and just really looking forward to a uh, to uh, a cracking season. Yeah, absolutely. Um, talking of the final, sort of brings us on to a bit of a recap of last season. Um, obviously, we made it, Storm made it through to the NBL D1 final. Um, and bar the, the final result, it was a great day out. Fun, fans absolutely loved it. Um, and it, 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 was so, it was so disappointing because we, from being sort of what we thought was dead and buried, we came, every pun intended, storming back. And, you know, to, and then at one point, I think we were one or two points ahead. I can't quite remember. Um, and then so just at the end, of the, I just felt utterly sort of deflated, really. Because it was such a journey last, I think, last season with a derby quarterfinal, you know, Bodie in the corner, um, the one that the three that nobody saw and wasn't captured on YouTube, looked like <laughs> being thrown from the crowd. Um, I, I saw that, onto... I was there, I saw it. Of course you were, yeah, yeah. Anywhere near it, did you actually see it? Or I did, I did see it. It all happened in slow motion, the way it bounced and went up in the air and then went back down. It was like one of those real sort of... Um, 
<laughs> out of body experiences where you watch it happen in slow yeah. motion. I did sort of veering off slightly. I, I did say this to you guys the other week. It reminded me very much of that Kawhi Leonard shot when he was playing for the Raptors. When he hit it, you know, almost in the corner, and it rolls around the rim about three or four times and just drops in. Then they went on to win the NBA championship later. Yeah? Sorry, just fearing off there. Bit of a, <laughs> bit of a tantrum. Um, and then obviously that led on to the, the TVC game. I mean, Christ, what a, what an atmosphere. That was just phenomenal. Abs- I mean, that's that's where I met you two guys. Obviously, I travelled with Rich to the game. Um, and then sitting behind Rob and um, Amy's daughter, um, who's incredibly vocal. Um, and it yeah, was, she, does, yeah, she doesn't get that from me. No. I'm quite no. quiet. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but it's, again, you know, I, I think we seem to be sort of fairly level pegging with TVC. And I think, I think it was towards sort of the third, end of the third quarter, fourth quarter, we really started pulling away. I think we were 91, 78 or something in the end. Um, but just that atmosphere at the end, that's what really, that to me was the game of the season. That really, and to have that photo at the end of all the fans, I thought, God, this is, you know, I had a lump in my throat after that game. I really did, you know, the hairs on the back of my neck were standing up and I thought, wow. You know, this, this, some of the iconic sort of football matches I've been to over the years. And it just, you know, obviously it's at a much lower level, but still the, the feeling is just, it's tangible. It's, it was exactly, I felt, I felt like a little kid again after that game. That's what I really, really loved about it. But that, that's one of the pulls of going to Storm, isn't it? That you feel part of something more than you do with some of the sort of bigger professional yeah. clubs. Um, yeah, and also, also away at Thames Valley was like having, it was like a home game for us. There was that many Storm fans down there. Michael will, will be able to tell us more about it, but there's always a bit of an atmosphere, a local derby quite type vibe when we play Thames Valley as well. So um, it, it was nice to beat them in at their place in the semi-final, definitely. Yeah. I, was, I, what I remember was your experience of that, Michael? Sorry, Fred. Um, yeah, Michael, what was your oh, experience sorry, sorry. of that from the TVC side oh, of the thing? It, it was... Um... One of the highlights of, of the season, one of the highlights of all the years I've been involved in 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 uh, the organisation. Um, lump in the throat is a perfect way to describe it. Um, when you look at that picture afterwards, what what memories that that that, that we have, um, and it that that night epitomises what it means to be involved with Hemel Storm, and I think you guys have all said it really well already. Is that you are part of something bigger than yourself um, and everyone is delighted to sort of be around each other and see the success of the, of the team. Um, yeah, absolute highlight. One of, one of the highlights of being involved and, and a great rec- recruitment tool. Um, so uh, makes people no, but I, I know, I know there's a bit of irony with that joke, but genuinely having, having you three here right now and having all those fans, people come to visit us. As soon as that buzzer goes for the end of the season, everyone wants to play for us. It's just working out who can and and what what possibilities are in place. So, yeah, unbelievable game. That playoff run will be remembered. Um, I've watched the final back three or four times, um, but this year is different. So onwards and upwards. Good to hear. Um, yeah, so we talked a little bit about last season, a bit of a recap of the final. One thing it'd be very remiss of us not to mention would be the news we had this week about Bodhi um, and Bodhi leaving Storm after 10 years, I think it is. Um, which is really, really sad. I mean, the guy's been a fantastic servant to the club. I thought he had a great season. You know, I mean, obviously I've only just come to Storm at the start of last season, but what I saw, I just, it was like Mr. Dependable. I thought there were some games and he was racking up 20 points and he was hitting shots from everywhere. And um, yeah, just like I say, a fantastic guy. And I, I hear he's very well respected at the club as well. But that that was Bode, wasn't it, Michael? You know, Mister Consistent always knew that he'd turn up and you'd get, you know, depending on how many minutes he played, but up to twenty points off him a game as well. And and he'd he'd help to get the crowd buzzing and the rest of the squad buzzing by him by his presence. Hmm. Yeah. So. Bodie is uh, Hemel Hemel legend. Um, there's last year when we did those um, we did that game against GB uh, over 35s. Those four people they they are Hemel Storm and Bodie is very much one of them. Um, Ten years of playing playing for one club um, deserves a lot of recognition. But there's being involved with a club, but there's then there's having the impact that Bodie had. Um, 
you can talk about scoring 3,000 points. That, that's, that's fantastic. But if you look at some of the pictures that were uploaded to, to honour him being there, spending time with kids, spending time with fans. And like you say, he'll be the one going to the crowd, going like this and getting them into it. Um, so, yeah, he, he absolute legend. Um, and I was fortunate enough to play with him for a number of years. Then I was fortunate enough to um, be on the coaching staff with him, then being involved. Um, I, can, I can't count how many times that he's come up clutch. Uh, the Derby moment was definitely one of them. Um, back in the day when Leeds Force was in the NBL, he 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 tore them up single-handedly. Um, Worthing away, I remember him scoring 41 points against them. Uh, he, okay, yeah, he might not be the biggest man uh, in stature, but his heart and his competitiveness is is unbelievable. So yeah, he will be missed. Um, and yeah, thank you for everything he did. Does he have Absolutely. plans? Michael, we, um, sorry, we, we were talking actually no. about uh, how, how do we, you know, what ways clubs honour on a players. And we were, we were thinking about, you know, maybe there might be something that Storm would do around like uh, retiring a number or doing something. So know. there are discussions going on about that currently. I so. thought there might be, yeah. Oh. <laughs> Brilliant. But yeah, I was just going to ask a moment ago, do you know if Bodie's got any plans to go into another club or is there talk of him retiring or... So I'm not aware of what's happening. Um, I'm, okay. not, I'm not aware of where he will be next, unfortunately. So, sorry. No, that's okay. That's okay. Um, okay, so we covered Bodhi. The one big thing I know a lot of fans would like to speak about is the new signings and the re-signings. Um, I mean, obviously, yeah, Storm have signed five new players. They had, had, a, real, had a great off-season, really. Um, first one we'd like to talk about was a massive sort of curveball. No one had been mentioning his name whatsoever. And it came as something as a, we we're in a WhatsApp, a, a Storm WhatsApp group. There's about 10 of us in the group. And it was just, it was just on fire. The minute literally Storm posted, that was it. It was, you know, everyone was, it was almost like downing tools at work. Quick, you, we've got a chat about this. And um, that's Hak, Hakeem Silla. I mean, that, what a sight, I mean, for, Greg to leave, and we had concerns about Greg leaving. How could we replace Greg? But to bring in a player of Hakeem's calibre, that really is some coup by Storm. Yeah, so um, I haven't grinded for a girl as much as I've grinded for Hakeem Silla. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I, yeah. He's, he's one, obviously we know how good he is. Um, and he he was very loyal to Tem to Thames Valley, um, but this year he was he was open to change. Um, and what you guys, rightly so, have been very excited about is his numbers um, and his impact on the floor. But wait till you meet him as a person, okay? When we talk about being involved with Storm, the reason why I've been involved with Storm so many years is because the values that come with it he will fulfill those values and more. Um, he is a wonderful human being, heck of a basketball player. And yeah, you were, you were right to be excited about, about that signing. Um, we had our first practice of the year last night and um, it didn't take long to see his impact. So it's a pleasure, pleasure to have him there. And uh, I think the picture we uploaded um, of the, the surprised face of when he was announced summed up a lot of people's faces. Um, but yeah, let's see what he can do this year in, in the orange and black. So it, mm. in, your, in your eyes, Michael, is he almost a like for like replacement for Greg? Cause obviously, um, Greg was 20 points a game last season and probably more than that the season before and the season before that. So Mr. Consistent for three years brought a lot of physicality, good old rebounding at both ends. Is that, is Akeem that kind of same kind of ilk? Yeah, absolutely. And there's... Basically, the way the way the way the recruitment um, phase phase happens is there's a three stage process. There's there's stage one, which is me. So my job is to go out there and discover who's interested. Um, and I'm in everyone's inbox. I'm in everyone's messages, <laughs> um, testing the waters, seeing where their heads at. So that's stage one. Stage two is is sort of 
not a character assessment, but a conversation with Drew to see if our, um, the way we want to approach the year aligns. And then uh, the final stage is with, is with John. Um, and with Hakeem, he, he, he went through those stages pretty quickly um, just because of how well he carried himself. But like you said, he was a replacement for Greg but a diff he's a different player to Greg. Greg is more of a, of, um, they're both the same inside presence, but Greg is more of an, an outside shooter. He's more of a um, create his own stuff. Whereas Hakeem is a very good at rebounding, very good at finishing off a, off a catch. And when you have playmakers like Sam Newman, Seth, Taylor Johnson, they, they can play, they can create the space for Hakeem to then just finish around the hoop. Yep. And last night we we started introducing an offense and seeing the connection starting to develop based off what I just said was the reason we signed him was fantastic. Newman feeding him the ball, Johnson and him like firing on all cylinders again. Um, so yeah, if he can if he can be what we know he can be, then it's a fantastic sign. It's a different sign into Greg, but in terms of statistical replacement, you're absolutely right. In terms of tactical output, it's slightly different. Um, but that's why other pieces have been bought it. It's a jigsaw. It's basically yeah. a jigsaw. You sign him, okay, we've Pretty got that. Name, now we need someone else like Aaron Ray to fulfill the outside shooting that, that Greg gave us. Yeah. Um, so it's all a it's all a puzzle, but it's good fun. <laughs> do you, and do you think the semi final against Thames Valley and the amount of people that went to watch it helped pull him in? Um yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not poo pooing your hard work on getting him in my car. No, 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 not at all. <laughs> not at all. No, yeah, no, well, no. good uh, start there, Rob. Well done. <laughs> first, first podcast. That's it. I'm leaving. I'm bye. See it. No, um, yeah, no, no, like I said earlier, there's it's 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 an attraction for any player. Um, but yeah, that 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 would have had that had a significant impact, I believe. Um, so yeah. you mentioned Aaron. You mentioned uh, Aaron there oh, okay. as well, Michael. Cool. Sorry. We, no, we go on, make sure you're fine. Thank you. Go. We'll figure it out, Fred. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, um, and, and the jigsaw pieces, it looked like, you know, I don't know whether we've, we've looked to make a change to the profile of the team for, for this season based on, is that based on like how, how last season kind of finished up and areas to improve opportunities to, to develop the team, have more versatility or strength? Yeah, so at the end of every year, uh, Drew, Drew and I sit down and we analyse what we were good at, what we weren't very good at. Um, and if we, if the two of us are doing it again, that's not always the case. Um, <laughs> it's more, it's more than likely. But if if we're doing it again, um, what areas do we need to fill in order for us to be better? Um, and if you look at us, uh, if you look at our games last year, we we could outscore people. We, we could score, like, I don't know if you remember the Essex Rebels game. It was in the yeah. hundreds, hundreds. Yeah. And that's that's not that's not good. <laughs> um, and there was a few games where we won because we outscored opponents. Now, the old saying, it, it, yes, it's a cliche, but it's so accurate. Offense wins games, defense wins championships. And last year, we, we were like this because on the nights that we were hitting, we won. On the nights we weren't hitting, our defense then wasn't coming into play. Um, and when you when you look at the the playoff run, look, look at the numbers we were keeping: Derby, Thames Valley, Solent, all in low eight. Well, just under eighty, all of them. We kept yeah. we kept Solent Kestrels to seventy one points. Like, and that just showed how important defense was. Yes, I know we lost the final, but we won the we won the quarters and we won the semis. So what we tried to achieve this summer is pieces that enjoy playing defense or will play into the tactical style of play that we want to adopt. Hakeem Silo is a great defender. Aaron Ray is mobile, strong, rebounder, so we can tick that box off as well. Bernard, Charles, they're all long, agile, mobile guys who will, who will improve our defence. Um, Seth as well, he, he, he's, um, he's, he's nippy, so he'll be a pest for other, for other guards. So that was our, that was our objective. Um, we, 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 we've never struggled to score. We've struggled to keep teams from not scoring. So if we can achieve that this year, the golden number, the thing that Drew and I always try and work on is um, ideally under 20 points a quarter. 
Um, and then if we can get them under 70, even better. You get a team under 70, you've got a good chance of winning. Um, so, yeah, defence was all about our recruitment recruitment this summer. That's good because you pretty much covered all our new signings in, in a few <laughs> sentences. So, well, I can add not much else to ask now, really. I can add some more on each if you like. Um, yeah, no, well, we, we, we've all been watching footage of those guys, you know, extensively on YouTube. And Aaron Rye, he loves to dunk. Yeah. He really does love to dunk. Well, no, I watched about five minutes of him just dunking. I think my, my wife, she said, are you watching that again? <laughs> Literally, I just had this YouTube clip on, got it on my phone on the side of my desk where I'm supposed to, where I'm working. And um, he just loves, he loves yeah. to dunk, really he, does. He, he wasn't the only one watch. on so, on the videos. You watch Charles Aqua Davis or um, yeah. Bernard. They, you know, there's lots of clips of them dunking as well, which which gets the crowd on their feet. I remember being there when you dunked it once, Michael, and everyone was like up and jumping around like loonies, you know. Yeah. Um, it, everyone likes to see a dunk. That was a very rare occasion. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, but no, exactly. So um, all of the, yeah, all of these guys are, are big, big guys uh, and long guys and mobile. Um, but Aaron, Aaron last night was very impressive for his first training session. Um, what, what you, what you see a lot is playmaking ability from, from the guards, but we now have someone who can play make from the four spot and Teo can do that as well. Don't get me wrong. Um, but Aaron's Aaron's ability to to score off his own uh, accord, get other people the ball, shoot the three, rebound, yeah, it's it's an exciting signing. Um, and I I feel bad I haven't mentioned Seth much. Um, Seth Seth's reputation on his own because he shoots a ridiculously high volume of threes at a very good success rate um, will just create space for the others. Um, so yeah, it's a, it's an exciting time, absolutely. Well, we saw what Seth did to us last year in the USA Select game. Um, he's on our side this time, so he, dro- he dropped thirty-two points, didn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah he did. Yeah, it's yeah. thirty-two okay. points, wasn't it? I think he dropped some. Yeah, yeah. Shot very well. So yeah, he's well. he's with us now. So. And was that was that something we purposely went to recruit some more three-point shooters? So it's a not necessarily. It's all about, like I said, with a jigsaw. So it's all about how. The world, the world of Division One basketball is an extraordinary world. It's not like football. It's not. There's not thousands of people that you can choose. There's a, there's a certain pool of talent, and within that talent, you have to piece them together. And there's ways you can do it. The the import spots, the the two American spots, you can have a choice. You either go, you get your two Americans, and then you fill your British guys accordingly, okay, or you get your British guys. And then you feel you feel you're American because there's so many Americans that can fill these spots. Now, Taylor being Taylor Johnson is an anomaly because um, he's yeah he's a terrific basketball player. So he soon as we soon as the season over, let's try and get that one wrapped up. So as a result, we then went okay. We're losing Greg. We now need to find a replacement in Greg. And typically, you go down the import route. But then Hakeem became available. So once Hakeem became available, we then say, well, how how do we fulfill that other import spot? Okay, well, um, can we improve our three-point shooting from from the um, from the wing from the outside because then that creates more space for Hakeem on the inside? Um, so yeah, I've said it a few times. It's a bit of a jigsaw, a bit of a puzzle. Um, and there's some days I wake up and I'm like. Okay, we're going to get that guy over the line today, which then means we sign this guy and we sign this guy, and then that doesn't happen, and then we have to go back to the drawing board. But we're we're very happy with who we've signed, and everyone we've signed is a very good person as well. Uh, I'm not saying people in the past are not that. That's not what I'm saying at all. But that's a big thing for us to to maintain those store, um, storm values and also be a good basketball player. So the combination of the two, we hopefully struck gold. Oh, it's great to hear. There's a sort of real ethos behind the club, yeah. and it's, well, it's always been such a great community feel. And just I noticed it so much last season. I think the guys did as well. Um, it's just you know everyone connects to everyone else. It's got a storm community. I've already got to know so many people, um, and just from a sort of a fairly sort of small fan base. But everyone sort of like pulls together. Yeah, I think we like at the final and stuff and. We deliberately Sorry. delay our post-game talk 
So um, a lot of away teams, as soon as it's over, as soon as the game's over, they go and talk. Whereas our boys go and sign balls, go and interact, go and say hello to people. Um, and then when they're ready, we, we go chat. Um, and I think that's so important to, to make sure people feel part of it. Um, and buy a raffle ticket too, by the sounds of it, for next year. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah. Thanks for that plug, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, so we talked quite extensively about the new signings then. So the re-signings. Obviously, the first set of re-signings we had were during yourself, Michael. Yeah. Um, obviously, you've played for and now coached Storm. I mean, what is it what is it that makes you wanting to keep coming back? Um, it's it's quite simply, <laughs> I am um, completely in love with the club. <laughs> um, I, I yeah, I'm I, I'm in love with with everything it stands for, everything that um, it represents, everyone who's involved with it. Um, it's literally a family running a club, um, which is which is so lovely to be a part of. Um, and just seeing it grow, I've, I've always wanted to be a part of something bigger than myself. And I found that with Hemel Storm. I joined when I was, when I was 17, um, and we didn't have many people watching. We played out of, uh, it was sports space. Uh, we were playing in blue and now 12 years later, we're doing stuff like this where we've got hundreds of fans coming to watch us on a regular basis. Um, Tony Humphrey, the chairman, John Bunnell, director of basketball, Mike Penning, what what they've done as a group in order to create Hem or what it is 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 fantastic. And it it truly is an honor to be to be a part of it. Whenever uh, at the end of every season, John and Tony are like, have a little think if you want to be involved again. Uh, and then we'll have a conversation. I went, well, if you don't want me involved again, I will do the waters. I will do the raffle. Well, I won't do the raffle because by the sounds of it, we've got someone good now. Um, <laughs> but I'll, I'll sell the kit. I'll, I'll, um, I'll do anything. I'm just, it's just, yeah, I just, it's an honor to be involved. And I, I put so much time and effort into it and, and just seeing, seeing a win on a Saturday night makes it, makes it all worth it. Um, so yeah, that's, that's the reason really. And is it, no, is it great. something about working with Drew that helps that like, you obviously you want to be the assistant head coach is that is working with drew part of the reason you want to do that as well absolutely um the the man the man is an incredible basketball mind um and it's fantastic to be able to have someone like him head coach in our team um the passion he shows I know you guys see it on a Saturday for sure. I know he has a very calm demeanor, um, but he, his his passion is unbelievable. And the work he does from a Monday to Friday is is incredible. We we the, the amount of prep and 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 time he spends to make sure that we are can be the best we can be is fantastic. Um, and he was a heck of a player as well. And we actually played together for a little bit. So, like I said, when I was 17, he was one of the seniors. And my first training session, um, I think I was on defense. Yeah, I was on defense. And Drew <laughs> set a screen on me. And um, it was like going to a free chiropractor service. Um, my, whole back, <laughs> my whole back realigned. Um, and he was like, he didn't say this, but it was kind of like, welcome to playing men's basketball. And <laughs> and and that that grit and that determination, that toughness has gone into his coaching. Um, and yeah, he, he, well, he's made two playoff finals out of two. We missed, missed out on both, but to get there, he should be, he should be proud of what he's achieved. But mm. hopefully one more step this year and he gets the honours he deserves because yeah, he, we are lucky to have him at the helm for sure. It is always, um, part of the excitement watching drew run up and down the uh <laughs> showing his passion yeah. you know like you said he's he's calm and collected all, um, all you know when you talk to him but as soon as he's um in you know on the seat coaching he doesn't sit down for long does he no i've uh yeah i've i've, I've made sure his chair was where it should be a few times just to, so he's got some <laughs> <laughs> um right the next 
well, what was a massive re-signing and the one every Hemelstorm fan was probably really concerned about. Um, I mean, I know when Taylor Johnson, obviously, is who we're talking about, I remember when he posted on Instagram it, and it, it felt like a little goodbye message and I read so much into it. <laughs> you know, I was practically sobbing at my phone. I said to these guys, I said, that's it, that's it. He's not coming back. He's not coming back. <laughs> we we had about we half have... an hour of therapy, therapy yeah. session yeah. for Fraser. We, <laughs> we shipped a whole lorry of tissues around to Fraser's house. <laughs> yeah. He was that upset. Um, and then just the sheer elation to know that he'd re-signed. I mean, and that, that galvanised the fans even further. They thought, wow, we, we can do something really special next season with this guy here. Because he was just... A joy to watch, absolutely joy to watch, and and how much he gave to the fans as well. I mean, you could see after every three point, he was doing his three point gesture, and then he was, you know, hands in the air, whipping the crowd up, and all the crowd responded sort of tenfold to it. I mean, the, there was little kids going where I sit at the top of the stand by the DJ. Little kids were going nuts when he was doing that. Absolutely, you know, and even some of the adults too. Some of the parents <laughs> were going crazy, but yeah, the guy's just a phenomenal bowler. He really is what he brings to the club. He's just, he's just an exemplary prior. And and his work in the community as well through Russell Hoops is is fantastic. Um, as soon as, like I said, as soon as, as soon as that buzzer goes in the final, um, recruitment starts for me anyway. That that's when my stage one stuff starts. But he was skipped straight to stage three. <laughs> he was ch- chairman John Bernal, get to work, boys. And uh, luckily enough, he um, he came back. And last night was the first time I've seen him in a while. And the same old Taylor Johnson is 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 back. So so don't worry about that. Don't worry about that. Um, last year, I don't think he played against USA Select. Um, but he will. Yeah, he'll, he'll be around this time. So yeah, fantastic signing. Very, very pleased. One of the, without a doubt, mm. may, maybe, maybe the best player to ever play for Hemel Storm. Um, Tra- I I mean, Trayvon, Trayvon Wright. That's some accolade, isn't it? Trayvon Wright was a heck of a basketball player. Um, Capri Alston was very good as well. Um, but yeah, Taylor's Taylor's tough. <laughs> I just, um, I just remember him still living the game. So after the Derby quarter final, we all descended on McDonald's. Um, we were sitting there eating, and he spent the whole time we're in McDonald's moaning about some of the refereeing calls to Drew. You know, <laughs> we won the game, everyone else is on a high eating their Big Macs and whatever, and he's still he's still living the game. Yeah, all the players were having recovery shakes, obviously. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, <laughs> what, were, what were they, strawberry or chocolate? Yes, yeah, one of the oh, banana, I think it was. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, just for that's brilliant. I think. Um, sorry, Fred. I was just going to no, say, go on, um, go my experience of uh, Russell Hoops was how I first got into, you know, with Hemel Storm and, you know, seeing how Taylor is with the kids. I think he he really also is, and not just Taylor, but the whole Russell Hoops unit. But I think they they kind of pass on a love of basketball to 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 kids in a way, and you know, just have a great attitude, work ethic. I think they're real role models as well. So you know, so Jack and uh... attribute. Beyond Jack, the court as well. Yeah, Jack and PJ who who run that program. Um, yeah. How far they've grown is fantastic, and and like you say, they they get they get role models in the community, and what I like about what they're doing as well is they're pitching it to an age group, which is young. You see a lot of people that try and go for the 16, 18 age group. They're already in love with football. They're already in love with the other sports, but they're 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 target not target targeting is not the right word. That sounds like you're trying to get someone, but they're 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 making basketball available to to primary school kids, um, and and making them fall in love in the game. I, the amount of kids parties we have now at, at, at Hemel Storm nights is is fantastic. Um, so yeah, credit to them too, uh, Jack and and uh, and PJ and Nicole Walker as well. She her work with making that possible. Um, they do, yeah, they do a fantastic job. Just going back to Taylor, actually, I'm probably letting the cat out of the bag here, but we have talked about maybe pioneering this away games about all wearing um, white headbands. <laughs> okay, I've seen, so- I've seen them. You can buy them job lot on eBay, like some Nike ones. Um, the tight at the back, and they're just exactly like Taylor. But we just thought, you know, to create a bit of an identity, you know, like some 
in other sports, some fans that go to away games and stuff have got a bit of an identity. We just thought yeah, it could be a bit awesome. of fun. You know, maybe even bring it back to the Storm Dome or something like that. I think you should get a mullet Stand. as well. A mullet, a mullet and a head. Yeah. <laughs> that, that has been discussed. Okay, there we yeah. go. <laughs> I, I don't I think, think I'm allowed to wear that to on the sideline, but maybe, yeah, we'll maybe in one time. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So maybe we'll pioneer that at one game this season. We'll see how it goes. Um, yeah, then the next um, re-signing was obviously captain, Teo. Yep. Great, great to see him back. Yeah, he's, a, he's the definition of a professional. Um, yes, okay, it's a semi-professional environment that we're in. A few professionals are playing, like Taylor and the Americans, but in a semi-professional environment, he is the ultimate professional. Um, and what I, what I love most about him is he'll embrace any role and he will do what's best for the team always. Um, he's, a, he's a natural leader. He's a role model to the young boys that we have. So with the University of Hertfordshire, we've, we've getting young boys as like a, trying to get like a talent pathway through. Who's the one after practice telling them what they did right and wrong? It's Taya. Okay, so to have him back, um, we've always tried to keep a core. We've always tried to keep a core of guys that, that understand what Hemel means every year. Um, and he is he is exactly that. Um, he's another one where years ago, because me and him grew up playing together. Uh, he was a year older than me. Um, we played on county teams and stuff like that. And he then stopped playing for a year. And for the whole year, I went, you can't be happy. Like, come on, come back and play. And uh, he came back and played. And uh, yeah, so happy to have him there. And um yeah, and he's 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 a great captain, absolute great captain. You you can see that. You can see his influence on the court when the guys are all in a huddle and he's the one g and them up, you know. Um, and and as well as that, he's when you have a chat with him, he's just a genuine, lovely guy, isn't he? Which makes which makes people want to play with him and, and listen to his advice and stuff. He's a fellow Liverpool fan as well, so I have a lot of time for him. He's a uh, yeah, he's great. <laughs> uh, let's let's go over that one quite quick. <laughs> 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 yeah, let's keep let's keep other sports out of it, shall we? Please? Yeah. <laughs> there you go. That's killed the conversation, hasn't it? Really? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> ah, brilliant. <laughs> yeah. Anything else, Rish? At all? Or? No, I think um, the one thing I, I really stood out for me, I guess, was you know his comment when he resigned. You know, his statement of that unfinished business. I thought was like you know great to hear from from the captain as well. You know that he just you know, that fire to go, go down the next level. And, and it showed last night at our, our first practice. That, that, that first practice at the beginning of the year, a lot of guys haven't seen each other for three or four months. And the niceties were over pretty quick. <laughs> it was like, <laughs> yeah, good to see you, mate. Now let's go. And it was, it was great. And that's exactly the environment we need. Um, yeah, and you're right. Unfinished business. Absolutely. Absolutely. Epic. Okay. Right, next signing was Mr. Hemel. Jack Burnell, storm, <laughs> yeah. storm through and through. My favourite lights. I'm a big fan of Jack's lights out shooter, as I call him. I'm promoting him on the Instagram stories. I've actually got his jersey as well, the number seven. Okay. <laughs> he said he'd sign it. He said he, he's promised to sign it for me this season. So that will devalue it. So don't do that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, no, yeah, Jack, Jack, like you say, Jack. Jack is a Hemel boy. Um, his dad played for Hemel. Um, lights out shooter, but what I like about Jack is that he came, obviously came through the junior program, went to Barking Abbey for a little bit, came back, and each year his his input has expanded. So all his life, he's yeah, you're a good shooter, but being a good shooter only goes so far because everyone knows you're a good shooter. So that's what that's what they're going to stop. But his length, his uh, ability to now go after rebounds, his defense is constantly getting better, has made him a very valuable asset. And also the asset that understands the storm values. So it, sometimes at practice, when when those values aren't being followed, he will say that, um, which is which is great to see. So yeah, his reputation alone creates space for others when he's on the floor. Um, so yeah, great to have him back. He's also one of the one of the guys in the squad that always gets the fans going. You know, he's always yeah. waving his mm. t-shirt about and, and whatever. And it's all, it's also um, quite nice to watch him have a niggle with some of the opposition players as well. You know, because yeah. he's that passionate about wanting to win. You you do need some people like that in your team. Yeah. A little bit too much at times, but we won't talk about that. <laughs> yeah. <okay. laughs> 
Mm. Yeah, so um, the next one after that was Sam, Sam Newman, who yeah, to me right. is a phenomenal basketball player. I just, I just love all the sort of behind the, behind the back passing and things like that. That's what gets me going. Yeah, he's a, a, style, a very stylish basketball player. Um, fl- flashy, plays with confidence. Um, he, yeah, he, he, he was a big pickup when we picked him up a few years ago. Um, can shoot the ball, can create for others, loves to facilitate. So now we have, now we have Seth around him, Taylor around him, Aaron around him, Hakeem around him, Jack, Charles, Bernard, you name it, Nick, Cavell. He is, he is going to have a field day with all these scoring options around him. Um, so yeah, pleasure to have back. And he shows great leadership values as well. And now he's part of, now he's fully part of that core that I was on about. He's been here three, t- three or four years now. Um, and he understands the storm values. And, and all of those boys that I'm talking about, like Jack, Teo, Sam, they help with the recruitment process as well. They're selling the club. So sometimes if someone's on the, on the occasion where someone needs to ask some questions that from a player's perspective, Sam, would you mind going and speak to this guy? Teo, would you mind going? They go and do it. Um, so yeah, great to have him back. Um, and I still don't think we've seen, I, he's a heck of a basketball player, but I still don't think we've seen the best of him yet. And I think this year, with his ability to distribute and facilitate, we're going to see the very best of Sam Newman. Um, so, yeah. Oh, that's great to hear. Um, the last uh, re-signing through the door was Nick, Nick Allen. Yep. So another one, an, another guy, um, Mr. Reliable. Um, he get another one who gets Storm's values. Um, has been there through the junior program, um, and I know he doesn't play as much as he wishes, but that doesn't stop. That doesn't bring the camaraderie down when he's around. He's not an energy sucker. He's an energy giver, um, and people like him are rare. Um, and and he deserves he deserves to be back in the fold. And uh, yeah, look forward to working with him again. Good stuff. So yeah, that's pretty much covered all the new signings and the re-signings. Um, just got a few questions for you, Michael. If that's all right. Just a yeah, few things course. I'd like to sort of run past you. Um, first one we've got here. Who do you see as the biggest sort of threat in the NBL this season? In terms okay. of te- other teams. Um, well, Derby, Derby for sure. Um, the league, the league. <laughs> Yeah, like I've said earlier, 12, 12 years I've been involved in Hamilton basketball. We did, we did a couple of years in Divi- one year in Division Two, and then went into Division One. The standard of the game has grown so much in those twelve years that I think we're now at the best it's ever been. You can Derby and Worthing are absolutely the two two of the top teams, but when you look at Reading, Newcastle, and TVC, they are always strong, always strong. And then teams like Bradford, people, a lot of people in the basketball community underestimate Bradford. I don't know why they're, they're tough and they've signed some great players again. And then in this off season, you see some are very active on social media. Some aren't the likes of Solon, Essex, Loughborough, Lions and Nottingham hoods. They haven't been very active. They've been quite quiet in terms of uh, externally, but internally they'll have, they'll have some plans. Absolutely. And then the two new boys, Manchester and Westminster, they've got a point to prove. They, they've got to try and stay up again. Uh, and they've made some nice signings already. I've said everyone. It shows how strong the league is, but based off what we see without a ball being thrown yet, yeah, because that could change everything just because you've signed really good players doesn't mean you're going to be really good. And that's the same with us. Um, but the biggest, the biggest two threats are, are Derby and Worthing without a doubt. Malcolm Smith is a, uh, is a, has been a one of the leading players in this league for years. Orland Jackman gone to Worthing. He's another one, leading player. Um, and and they've surrounded themselves with with exciting young talent. Um so yeah, we'll see. We'll see. I'm looking forward to playing against them. Yeah, the, seems the one to... Guys, sorry, Rob. Sorry. There there seems to be a lot of optimism among Storm fans this season as well, off the back of the sign ins and um the hope that we can go one better. Um, so, you know, I think we're all really excited about what we what the recruitment that's happened and 
what we expect expect the team to achieve this year. I guess the the minimum is to make sure we get a home quarter final this time. Yeah, home quarter final would be lovely. And there's there's four trophies up for grabs. There's the trophy, there's the cup, there's the regular season, and then there's the playoff. Obviously, the playoff title is what everyone goes for, but winning winning one of the four would would be would be great. Um, so yeah, let let's see, let's see. We know what expectations on us, so don't worry about that. <laughs> Uh, you got anything to add, Rich? So, well, I was interested in in the um, the, the the teams that we're looking to compete against because one of the areas that I'm I'm really interested in is I think the the TBC away day was, was epic, and I know as a group we've talked a bit about trying to get to more of those away kind of venues, bringing the, the that you know the Storm Dome like on the road with with you guys. Um, so it'd be good to know. I mean, it sounds like those are the, the two places that would definitely be great to uh, to go and visit. But are there any others that you think are really fantastic away venues? Um, yeah, Derby and Worthing. Yeah, if you if you could come to that, fantastic. Um, Manchester Magic away is something I really enjoy, simply because their their run out song is "It's a Kind of Magic" um, by Queen. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm so like the players yeah. are running out and I'm like yeah this is great and then I have to realise which team I'm on um, so it'd be nice <laughs> to do that again um, but yeah Derby and Worthing without a doubt are the big ones I think there's a lot of potential going on in Essex that facility that venue is one of the best in the country um, so yeah it'd be great to have you everywhere but um, Derby and Worthing without a doubt I think, mean, like Rich said, that's very much our plan, really. And that's the whole idea and the concept behind Let's Go Storm is to maximise support for Storm. You know, I mean, it's pretty much covered at the Storm Dome, but at the away fixtures, I know they get, you know, a sort of decent crowd, but it'd be great to really maximise that. And, you know, even to have a, a fraction of the sort of size of the crowd as TBC in the semi final last year, that'd be fantastic. You know, particularly in some sort of partisan arenas that they're playing in. And and a few times, Drew and I have have haven't needed to do any team talk. Boys, look around you. That's all the motivation you need right now. Like Thames Valley away, that was that. Obviously, there was technical and tactical stuff we talked about. But in terms of that that inspira inspirational quote that a coach is always looking for, sometimes it's easy to just go look around you, hear the noise. Um, and it yeah, it was a very memorable day. And uh, what Storm's all about. Would you say that's one of your favourite Storm memories overall from your whole 12 years? I, have you got a favourite so, Storm memory? I have so, I have so many. I, I've, it's another reason why I've been involved. That, yeah, that's up there for sure. Um, Drew hitting me on the back screen, that always makes me laugh. Um, si uh, Spud Kearney, Waleed, Tom. At practices, it was always always good fun with them, and I'm so pleased that them and Bodie as well now got the send off they deserve. Um, before before we used to travel on a big coach, we used to travel sometimes traveling cars, and then we went for a stage of going on on a mini bus. And there was one time we sort of uh, we played hide and seek on the mini bus, um, which is was absolutely ridiculous. Um, but it's the camaraderie that, that's developed each season. And I know I give a silly example like that, but that's what makes it so so memorable. And and gen generally, Saturday nights, Saturday nights, seven o'clock, Hemel Storm, that's 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 what I do it for. And like the Reading, I don't know if you I don't know if you guys were there for when we played Reading uh, to get to the to get to the playoff final when we played Worthing. Uh, that was a very memorable experience. Um, so yeah, there's there's so many to think of, but Thames Valley's up there for sure, for sure. Obviously, that year we played um, Worthing in the playoff final. We also um, won the national cup that year, didn't we? So is that up there as well? I'm guessing. Yeah, it's a nice achievement, um, but you're not going to win a playoff final with uh, this guy here, top scoring. <laughs> Uh, yeah, you're going to need a lot more than that. So, yeah, we didn't stand a chance. <laughs> that, that was a, a very good web inside, though, that day. Yeah, Zaire, Zaire's a yeah, great basketball player. 
Um, Brendan Okoronko was there, Tom Ward, um, Mattis, the inside presence. Um, National Cup was great. Playoff final was disappointing. Um, but as I've said earlier, now now we've got to start winning things this year. I just I remember that day as well because I'd started going to away games that season and I went to the National Cup final. But that playoff final, the amount of coaches that headed up for, from Hemel was unbelievable. Yeah, it's it's extraordinary, and uh, and I hope I hope I don't know if you guys can do it this year, f- not not just for me, but for for us as a as a playing group and as a coaching group, and make sure they all know how grateful we are. Um, because especially after the final, everyone was so gutted and disappointed, um, and I hope people realised how, even though we did we did lose the how much we appreciated all the effort in coming up there. Um, so yeah, yeah, we did. We all, we all got that, and I think it, it was a real touch of class, Michael, that you came and got on all the coaches as well and come come and said that to us. I think it was a real real touch of class that. So uh, you know, appreciate you doing that. No worries, deserved it. Mm. Thank you. The only um, is there any way you can get the final <coughs> move to a Saturday night next year, rather than yeah, and, yeah. and at the copper box as well, preferably. <laughs> I can, I'll try. I'll try. It's above me. It's above me. But we we'll, we can speak to the chairman, see what magic he can do. Um, they try and make it a weekend. The Barcelona England try and make yeah. it a weekend, so they have the national finals, national junior finals on the Saturday, and then they have the senior finals on the. Uh, no, sorry, they have the. The Division Three finals and Division Two final, I think, mm. on the Saturday, women's and men's, and then the, and then Division One women's and men's on the Sunday. So they try and really make a weekend of it. Um, but now I do, I do hear what you're saying. Sometimes, if if we ever do win, that Monday morning after work is not going to be that fun, but uh, it'll be worth it. Yeah. <laughs> it'll be worth a day off, won't it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> call in sick. On just, just, <laughs> just, just, just taking it back a minute. Actually, you were saying about the run-out music at some of the wave venues. The one thing I've sort of said, to some of the management team at Storm, it'd be great if we could do that at the Storm Dome, and not like have something like you know Chicago Bulls intro music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you, hear, it's on the last dance, something like that for players to run out to. That would be, that'd be fantastic. Really, really sort of whip the crowd up. Yeah, a bit so- of a sort of light show. Even if it's someone just turning the light on and off. Yeah, no. <laughs> I could do that if you want. I don't mind. Um, a dimmer switch. Yeah, dimmer switch. Yeah. Um, no, yeah, I, yeah. It's it's uh, another another thing that can tick off the game night experience. My my dad used to play um, for Hemel, um, and I I'm not sure if this song was the run out song for Hemel when he was there, um, but he always said how much those types of songs changed his whole sort of inside feeling to get so mm. up for it and the crowd then got into it um so yeah we i've always thought about you know where we sit you know where we all sit and then behind us when we go out for half time we all line up we all line up there and we come through that door and then run onto the court that's that's what i've thought because you can't really do you can't really do this side where people are coming in because tickets mm. are obviously being purchased uh, the other side there's no axe there's nowhere to go um so yeah that corner and get a spotlight in the opposite corner and uh yeah, yeah makes yeah. makes you want to play again let's go come on yeah. <laughs> we, we, we'll need to tap you up for ideas of what song will we'll, uh well we'll it's kind of the guys. that's quite good i quite enjoy that one we uh, can't use that can we <laughs> <laughs> you'll never want like- i don't mind that one that's a good no, one no not that one i quite like riders <laughs> oh come on come on <laughs> Yeah, I've always liked Riders on the Storm by the Doors. I think that'd yeah. be quite a good one. Yeah, Although yeah. it's an old one. A lot of the kids of today probably wouldn't know it. But, but you're right. Like the, well, Chicago there's a storm Bulls, coming. the Chicago Bulls song, that'd be great. Um, yeah, I'm sure if you did a little poll or something, you would get quite quickly what people want. Mm. Yeah, good shout. Talking of yeah. polls, Michael, I've got a bit of an out there question for you. Go What's on. your favourite basketball film? Uh, so yes, sorry, I'm gonna give straight forward. Coach Carter is probably my favourite one. Uh, even though the punishments on it are a little bit excessive, and a little bit, I don't think they're completely accurate. The amount of suicides they did, um, <laughs> but in terms of in terms of a story, in terms of a uh, um, the the vibe and the environment that basketball can create, 
I think that ticks all the boxes. Um, so yeah, that's probably Coach Carter. It is a really good film, that one. That is a question we're going to ask every guest. So we can come <laughs> up with a, well, you know, what's the voted for best film? <laughs> what's yours, Rob? Just out of interest. I struggle with mine. Mine alternate between a three, I think, but I'd probably say White Men Can't Jump um, just because that was one of, when I was just started playing basketball secondary school, that kind of came out and was, was, was a big film. How about you, Rish? It's hands down. It's uh, the new Adam Sandler movie, Hustle. Oh, yeah, I was going to say that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, great movie. Fantastic. It's so many cameos mm-hmm. as well, isn't it, from NBA players? Yeah, yeah. that that it's was one of those. Story. That was one of those where our WhatsApp group went mental, wasn't it? After everyone had watched it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What yeah, about you, Fraz? Good, good What's film. your favourite one? Um. Yeah, I'd, I'd probably say Hustle. To be honest. But I quite like watching basketball documentaries. Like yeah. I watched, there's a really good one on Vince Carter. That I watched. There's a really good one on the Raptors as well on their NBA championship winning season. That's there's more one. my sort of thing. Sorry, Fraz. There's there's no, a there's a documentary on um, YouTube. It talks about um, Petrovic and Divac, um, and how they were best friends. And then there was the war in um, Yugoslavia. Mm. And, they broke up. Yeah, yeah. and the transit the story of that and how then basketball becomes more than basketball and their relationship is deteriorated if you ever get a chance to watch that that's a fantastic that's a fantastic documentary and also the dream team yeah. i think that i think that's what imagine being on that team wow amazing uh, that was sorry, a 92 sorry, that was a nice no no it's fine that was a 92 olympics team wasn't it usa yeah. that's it yeah yeah, see, I like stuff as well, like when Shaq and Kobe sat down a few years, yeah. not long before he sadly mm. um, passed away. Uh, that was fantastic, that hour-long um, thing. And there, there was a really good, I can't remember what it was on, it was on BT Sport, I think, the Celtic and Lakers, the sort of rivalry that built up, okay. you know, from the early years, the NBA sort of working its way through. Love that sort of thing, even though I'm a Knicks fan. <laughs> the, Larry Bird, oh, the Larry Bird, Magic Johnson dynamic as well. And how mm. a lot of people forget, obviously Michael Jordan's an absolute superstar and helped the game grow massively. But without Magic Johnson and Larry Bird, the game was at a real low point and it needed two superstars, two superstars that were complete ends of the spectrum. And what a story them two are. And there's a yeah. lot on that as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because that. they said they were just constantly Larry pushing Bird's my favourite right? player, without a doubt. So. Yeah, you're a Celtics fan, aren't you? The NBA, yeah. if I recall seeing your stories and stuff, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah I'm a so excited. Yeah, just ju- just a few. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> have you been to TD? Have you been to TD Garden? I've never. I've only been to America once, and that was um, for a basketball camp when I was younger. Um, I'd love to go there one day. Um, so, if Georgia, if you watch this, sort it out. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Is that what you're hoping for? USA for your honeymoon, or? Well, she she did ask the other day. And uh, I had to give the politically correct answer, whatever you'd like to do. But deep down, it was, uh, yeah, let's go to the TD Garden and watch the Celtics. But yeah. As, as you know, worst case, can't you align it with whenever the NBA are playing in Paris or something and do that yes. instead? Yeah, that's a good idea. That's a good, but shit, yeah. Yeah, we'll see. I don't know. They're in Dubai as well soon, aren't they? There's a Dubai game this year. Is there? Okay. Is there? NBA game in Dubai, yeah. Okay. Mm. Should probably yeah, get, it, it wasn't. probably get me tickets for the London game. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I don't think it's been. I don't think it it's moved to Paris, didn't it? Is it? Yeah, it moved to Paris. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah, I feel we, we get, we, we're going we're gonna to get Michael in trouble. <laughs> I'm already in trouble. Don't worry about that. <laughs> yeah, we, we went to the States. We went to San Francisco for our honeymoon. And literally, it was just before um, the pre season started. Oh. So we sort of missed out by sort of two, three weeks. I was okay. absolutely gutted. Get married again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've talked to Hayley about that yeah, yeah. house, so we could pop out, you know, to MSG. But she, she's always wanted to go to New York. Um, just got one other question for you, Michael. Congratulations on your new role, by the way. Thank the you University very much. University of Hatfield. Um, can you tell us a bit about that and how that sort of intertwines with the work you do at Storm? Yeah, so it, it all started um, a few years ago when I finished my time at Brunel. Um, and I ended up doing a master's at that university and I played on the team 
Um, and then I did a PG, trained to be a teacher out of there. Uh, and that's when I got injured. So I couldn't um, play anymore. And I thought, well, how else can I impact? How else can I help? And uh, the coaching role became available as an assistant to my dad originally. Um, and then I had to find a way to get him out. Um, no, and then he, uh, <laughs> then he, then he stopped, and then I, I stepped in as 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 the head coach, um, and then been doing that on a part time basis for for a couple of years now. And then I was teaching at a school in Watford, and then the opportunity to become um, the performance sport and scholarships manager became available, and uh, alongside coaching the basketball team, and I took it um bit of a risk in times you've got to take in, in life you've got to take risks sometimes but now that team's been promoted to the prem so like the, like the highest level of, of of bucks competition it needed more of a full-time approach um so it's a win it's a win-win plus now hemel have I've, I've really tried to drive the the relationship between hemel and hearts so we train out of there we have the university of Hertfordshire division three team um, and as sort of like a feeder team into the first team. So Cavell, for example, came from there. Um, and we train out of there on a Thursday night. And um, Bryn Clark, who's the deputy director of sport, and Hannah Darling, who did my role previously, really embraced um, sort of Hemel. It was me, really, like coming to you saying... Hemel and Hearts, let's 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 get this going. Let's get something uh, let's get something great happening. And and they they've they've been fantastic ever since then too. Especially COVID times, they were our venue. Um, they came up big for that. We would have struggled. Um, so we're still at the beginning of our relationship, but it's growing. Like for example, Greg Greg played for the university and he played for Hemel last year, and and that's something we want to try and build more players. Play Playing for both, it only benefits both organisations. And it, and and if I'm being completely frank with you, it's a recruitment tool as well. Come play for us, and we'll we you can come do a masters as well. Um, how 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 great is that? Yeah. So um, partnership is still very still very young, taking steps in the right direction. Um, so yeah, I'm excited for the future for sure. That's great. Um, just sort of lastly, really, we just wanted to talk about the upcoming fixtures. Okay. Uh, we're just going to look at them sort of on a month by month basis as we're going along on the podcast. So obviously, we've got the uh, USA Select team. Yep. They're up first of all. Um, uh, do you know who's going to be playing? Do you know they're bringing over? Oh, I see. <laughs> you don't know until they walk through the door. So you kind of, um, you kind of, you kind of get a gist of it because they play so many games in so yeah. many days and. And those boys, fair play to them. They're trying to get a professional. They're trying to get a professional job. Um, so you kind of get a gist of it by who they've played before. So I think they play the Riders, Leicester Riders, the week before. Um, but then I think I'm not sure this time. But sometimes they've had two teams. So you then not sure which team you're going to be playing on that day. So you can do a load of work. Oh yeah, they're going to have this player. Oh no, they're not here. Um, so it's uh, it's a bit of a it's a bit of a who knows what 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 turns up, but we're we're trying to do we're trying to do the best we can to to get the guys ready for that game in ways that we can control. So physically, conditioning, um, blow the cobwebs off of, of being away in the summer, and that started last night. So I really like that game. I really enjoy that game um, because it's 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 the beginning. It's the start. And fans to start building relationship with players and vice versa. So, mm -hmm. yeah, looking forward to the tenth mm -hmm. for sure. And are you going to be looking for people who scored thirty points against us and get on the phone <laughs> next season for us? <laughs> uh, yeah, I'll, you know how I said I'm straight in their inboxes. I'll be I'll be straight in theirs yeah. as well. So, uh... <laughs> Good stuff. Um, and so the next three games then: Hoods, Charmwood, and Loughborough. They're all trophy games. Yep. So is, is that the trophy that's replacing the L Lynch? Because I believe that's not yeah. there anymore, is it? Yeah, I'm not sure on the title of it yet, but it's it's basically the 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 trophy. Um, and I don't I don't get some people's mindset to that trophy. That is a national trophy, and some people see it as a preseason tournament. You can win a national title. If you win three games, you're in a quarters, then semi, potent home quarters, home semis, you're in a final. 
like we're going for it, and the guys have said the same thing. We're we're going for that as much as as much as we're going for them for when the season starts. Um, so having Hoods at home, we having Charmwood at home. If we can win them two games, and then and then if we win them two games, we're through. But if we can then beat Loughborough, that's a home draw. Um, so Loughborough away is always tough, um, but a home draw in in a national competition, I'd take that absolutely. So yeah, lot to look forward to on the 18th. We'll, we'll be going for that. And we it's lost to Hoods twice last year, and I don't want to do that again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Were you at the Hoods game, Rob? The away game? No. One of the okay, most extraordinary, one of the most extraordinary games I've ever been involved in. It, we were. I thought it was not that I thought it was done. You never have that mindset. But I was like, we've got this, and then yeah, it's not going to happen again. <laughs> Where, which, what league are Charmwood in? Because obviously they're not in. So Charmwood are in Division Two. Okay. Um, so similar to the BBL Trophy, the BBL Trophy has predominantly BBL teams, and then they invite uh, NBL teams. So whoever finishes in the top four, if you're in the top four, you're entered into the BBL Trophy. Solent have take have withdrawn their place. Um, I believe. Don't count me on that, but I do believe. So Hoods Hoods finished fifth, so they've taken that extra spot. So then this trophy has then emulated that. So majority NBL Division One, and then a couple of um, Division Two sides. So Charmwood and I think Mysco. I might be wrong. Um, so yeah, and it's good for those boys. Those Charmwood, Barkin, and Mysco are 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 leading academies in this country. So for them boys to have the opportunity to come against D1 players is only good for for them and good for the UK as a whole because our best players are going against other good players. Mm. Um, so it'd be it'd be good to I've never never competed against Charmwood before, so looking forward to that. Just you talked about the BBL though. Um, have Storm got any aspirations to be in it? Like Reading have obviously applied, and they, I think from next season they're looking to play in the BBL. Um, obviously, there's always talks. There's always um, there's always one too many drinks, <laughs> that, and then a discussion happens. Um, but unfortunately, that sits above me. Um, and if you ever get the chairman on, ask him. <laughs> Very diplomatic there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I know there was um, an interview in lockdown and Jack was on it with um, Rebound. Yep. Chris Hughes. And I think he asked Jack the question then and Jack said, yeah, we'd love to be in the BBL we, we, one day. There's, there's no doubt I mean, about it's, that. It's, if you pardon the pun, it's, it's sort of tailor-made, I think, a club like Hemel. Yeah, there's, I think the, uh, there's there's no doubt, but it's a lot easier said than done, um, and yeah, it's a whole new whole new ball game. Um, it's quite a serious financial investment as well, isn't it? From what I've from what I've read, and and look at the yeah. London Lions now. Look at the jump in talent that they've signed two NBA players. Um, so yeah, what a what a jump that would be! But it's exciting, very exciting. I think British basketball, British mm. basketball right now is at the, is at this point, Commonwealth Games success for the men and the women. We have a good Euro basket which starts on Friday. Um, but yeah, basketball's on the up. BBL teams becoming very sustainable, self sufficient, building new arenas. Bristol built one. Newcastle got their own. Leicester Lions. Everyone, everyone should be a London Lions fan in Europe. We want them to do well because if sponsors see them do well, they'll then jump on the riders, the Eagles, and then and then grow that. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm I'm excited for British basketball right now, and uh, yeah, we could be on the cusp of something of the game becoming, even though it's played by so many people, becoming more of a, in the people's thought process on a Saturday night, mm. traveling to watch football. Come and watch Hamill Storm. Come watch London. Go and watch London Lions. They released their ticket prices recently. They were, they were reasonable. Um, I saw the season tickets were £80. The incredible. cheapest season ticket. Incredible. A lot of fans are... Yeah, I know some guys who live in like the Midlands and stuff. They're saying they, they'd potentially just get one and come down sort of every other game, really, for that price. Hmm. Oh, 
Can you hear me okay? Yeah, yeah we're all I good. think you're in now, Fred. Sorry. Yeah, sorry, sorry. Yeah, too excited sorry, about your ticket it. prices. Sorry, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was, yeah. Yeah, I still haven't been to the um, Copper Box. I'd love to get along there. It'd be try great to see Storm, Storm playing there. If you can, yeah. try and get try and get to a, a Euro a Euro game. So obviously the BBL games, they're great on the weekend, but a Wednesday night there, they're, they're, they're taught, the, the teams they're now playing against will bring fans. I don't know mm. if you saw the GB Latvia game the other day. It was full of Latvians. The Copper Box is going to be the same, full of opponents, opponents' fans. What an atmosphere mm. that will be. Um, so, yeah, that would be my biggest advice in terms of going to watch the Lions Wednesday nights. Yeah, I mean, sort of veering off a bit, but it was still at the Copper Box. It was the game where LeBron's sons played in. Amazing. Yeah, they, had, like, they had over 5,000 there. It was practically sold out. Yeah, Hoops Fix. What what a summer. He's, yeah. he's an incredible Sam, man. Yeah, Sam Nita, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because there was the game at Crystal Palace as well. I couldn't, I can't remember why, but I couldn't make it. I was seriously looking at going initially before something cropped up. But, um, yeah, I really wish I'd got along to that because apparently the atmosphere was just phenomenal. Yeah. He, it, it, rem what, it reminds me a lot. Sorry, go on. Mike. No, I was going to say what Sam Neat has done for years for British basketball was already incredible. But this summer, he's raised the, raised the game yet again. Um, and that that game against LeBron's LeBron's boys uh, on ESPN in the Copper Box with every seat filled, brilliant, fantastic. Now, how do we make that every game? <laughs> yeah, I mean, you touched on it there about the the feeling amongst British basketball sort of fans at the moment. It, it reminds me, it sort of takes it back a bit to sort of like the eighties and nineties. That's how it's feeling a bit to me. Like it was right on the precipice of sort of going up a whole nother level it just feels you're right it feels we're right on the cusp of something sort of breaking big yeah i wasn't alive then so i can't i can't go in too much but, uh... <laughs> thanks thanks very much <laughs> <laughs> but i i have I'm, I'm, like... I'm a night i'm a 94 born and i know it was a. Uh, i've heard good oh things. My god. <laughs> oh my god but it was though sorry, taking you back sorry, to guys. the rules playing that was just that was phenomenal atmosphere it really was like i said the town just as it does now, the town on a Saturday night, just it came alive. Brilliant. Really came alive. Brilliant. Yeah, it was great, great memories of going down there with schoolmates and stuff. We're starting Good again. Times. Two weeks, we're back. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Can't wait. Can't wait. So have you guys got anything else to add? Any more questions for Michael at all? Or anything you'd like to say, Michael? Or I just, I, I've, I've said it to you all face to face. Um, thank you. Thank you very much for what you're all doing. Um, it all feeds into the profile of, of what Hemelstorm is. It feeds into people wanting to join us, players included. Um, so you can give yourselves a pat on the back for, for some of the signings we've had. Um, and they comment last night at practice, they commented how welcoming they felt straight away. Um, so thank you for all you, all you guys are doing for for helping Hamill be what it is. We all really appreciate it. So thank you very much. Oh, you're welcome. It's the least we can do, really, for how, in turn, you know, how much Storm's given us all. You know, my family as well. My, my son's autistic and he's never really enjoyed any form of sport. And to see him coming to games, he has, although he has to wear his ear defenders and stuff, and we, we sit right near the DJ, but um, he really, really enjoys it. He, re he, get, he gets something out of it. And for me, you know, I'm sort of tearing up most games, just looking over at him and he's clapping and he's standing up and cheering at one game. It mean, means the absolute world to me and my family. It really, really does. Fantastic. Fantastic. Yeah, and like I said earlier, it's the only sport that I can take both of the girls to. Um, my oldest, unfortunately, was at Uni of Worthing last year, so she didn't come <laughs> as much. But, um, the Is this when we boo? <laughs> yeah, you can be that, yeah. Um, the referees get a lot of jip from my youngest. So, you know, they they when they're right in front of us for a free throw and she'll be saying something to them. So, um, yeah, it's it's a Saturday night and obviously they want to volunteer now. So it's great as a, as a family time for me. Yeah, same here. Same here. First, first sport my son really ever wanted to go to. Um, not really football, a bit more of a gamer, but, you know, as a sport I couldn't be happier for him to think basketball's a, an option rather than anything else really and uh, I think Storm really adds to that so yeah it's a really special place
Okay. Nothing else to add at all, anyone? Or I don't have any more questions no. for Michael. I think we've um, no. grilled him quite hard. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, no, I've, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll happily do it again if you ever like I said I've said it to you as privately as well if you ever need any help with anything just let me know and uh, yeah Thanks, I've, I've enjoyed it it's nice to talk basketball with people um, so yeah, yeah no, we pleasure. really appreciate thanks it lot, yeah thank, thank you for your time yeah, it's been really great, kind of time like tell, tell the rest of the, the coaching staff and the players that it's great fun doing this podcast with us so they so they're they're <laughs> yeah. encouraged to join they're, they're, they'll all see it rob when they subscribe won't they yeah. oh yeah. yeah oh yeah of course yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, we I'm won't sure. have to tell them will we i'm sure the guys <laughs> i'm sure the guys will be keen and uh and i like the approach we've done this evening we've had some fun and uh i think that's more engaging than some of the some of the other some of the other stuff you see um yeah, that's that's what we're all about, really. We we want to make this as enjoyable as possible. We we're not serious guys. We just want to come in here and have a bit of fun, and you know, just get the storm word out to more and more fans. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, be good to see you all again on the uh, on the tenth. So yeah, looking forward to it. Yeah, right, we'll we'll great, buy a raffle ticket, back. Michael. <laughs> that's only about the fifth plug this evening. <laughs> is that going to be the but title? That's going to be the title of the podcast, isn't it? This one. I'm, I actually, I'm, I'm yeah. going to change my Go name on tickets. the call. Go hashtag buy a, buy a raffle ticket or something. <laughs> okay. yeah. yeah, that's good. No, thanks brilliant. again, Michael. Really, really no appreciate your time. No worries at all. Good to see you guys. We'll see you on the. We'll see you on the tenth. See you soon. Bye bye. Thanks, Michael. See you. Really. On the thanks, Michael. Cheers. Cheers. Bye.